None other than Bob Costas is on the phone with us right now. 28 Emmy, 7. You would never shortchange yourself. <laughs> you would no sooner shortchange yourself an Emmy than Al Michaels would eat a green vegetable, Bob. You know, that's a good point. But, Susie, you have just given me insight into what my approach should be going forward for the rest of my career. Just select my greatest hits and let them play an extended version of that rather than me having to come on and try and think of something new to say. <laughs> if we could all just pick like the 10 best things we ever did, our lifetime batting averages would be much higher. Here's my question. What haven't you said yet? Let's think about that. I mean, with the amount of Olympics you've done, World yeah. Series, Super Bowls, what haven't you talked about yet? You know, I have a few rants that my, my friends uh, like to have me reprise from now and then, which I will not do now, but one has to do with how much I loathe parades. Or the, the only day of the year where I have any animus toward the group in question is when they parade down Fifth Avenue and make it impossible for me to cross the street. And everybody else has to go around and around and traffic has to be rerouted and the police have to be, have to be employed or sent to police <laughs> this parade. Meanwhile, Meanwhile, crime runs rampant in Gotham City, and Commissioner Gordon has to pick up the bat phone. You know, it's just all wrong. And you can't take your dog to the park to go to the bathroom, so what are you supposed to do? It's ridiculous. 100% correct. Yeah. 364 days out of the year, 365 in a leap year, I am on your side. And, the, the and a taxpayer expense. Parade and wear your silly costumes, I'm out. I love angry Bob Costas. <laughs> I think we're all so used to your America's voice in so many ways, Bob. And I feel like that when we get a little what bit kind of, of anger. Is America in if that is the case? By the way, don't. That's maybe not the wrong conversation, or right conversation to start with me. I think you know mm -hmm. that. Uh, no, that true. that said, um, but I do think it's fun to get angry Bob Costas for a change. I mean, we only get to see that in film. Yeah. Now, now and then, of course, this. Friday on HBO, and thank you for the lead-in, this Friday on HBO is the premiere of Back on the Record with Bob Costas. And if I am not exactly angry, I will be pointed, at least at some points during the hour, which follows Bill Maher, 11 o'clock Eastern Time, this coming Friday night. I'm excited to have this back because I was talking about this yesterday. There's been a loss of storytelling and a loss of perspective and essayists um, because everyone's so busy yelling and screaming at each other on a two screen or a seven screen or what have you. I'm really excited to have this back on the air, Bob, not only at HBO, but HBO Max. What should we expect and what are you looking forward to the most having this back in your saddle? Well, I'm only doing four a year. <clears throat> it's supposed to be a quarterly show. We got pushed back twice this year because of COVID. So now we'll get four in in 2021 by doing them in four consecutive months, July through October. But going forward, it'll be quarterly. Uh, I'm interested in quality rather than quantity. At this point, I don't want to have a show hanging over my head every week or every month. And we are not looking to duplicate or do better by degree that which is already out there. So it's not the same as Real Sports with Brian Gumbel, which is the 60 Minutes of Sports, and is great on its own terms. And it's certainly not the same thing as the debate shows that we see on a daily basis all over uh, the dial, the cable dial. Some of that is fine. Some of the opinions are insightful or humorous or interesting, but a lot of people are doing it already. So will this be exactly what every sports fan most enjoys? No. But everything now is a niche, and HBO is, for all of its prestige, and there's plenty of it, and that's why I wanted to be associated with them. Again, they do things at the highest possible level, but it's still a boutique thing. People come to it uh, in lesser numbers than they come to the NBA Finals or the World Series or whatever it might be, or certainly than the Olympics, even during a pandemic. So we will find our audience, or they will find us, um, and it will be... It will remind those who are old enough to remember of some of the things I used to do. It'll be a blend of commentary, of uh, interviews that will not be confined to three and a half minutes. There'll be some depth to it. And although the first show has only sports figures among uh, those appearing, in the past, especially on HBO, we 
we had Springsteen on the show. We had Tina Fey and Seinfeld and Chris Rock and J-Lo was on the show and Clooney and Hanks were on the show. If they like sports and they have something to say uh, about it, then we can branch out beyond sports with them. So that'll, that'll be part of it. I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel. The name of the show, Susie, tells you that. It's back on the mm-hmm, record. So mm-hmm. say, same idea, update it a little bit, and hopefully I haven't lost my fastball. I expect greatness, especially from Ross Greenberg. So there you go. I w- yep. would love to know who to look forward to watch on, on this coming Friday edition. On the first show, we have Charles Barkley, and he will be given uh, all the room he needs. Um, Ali Raisman, which is topical uh, because of her outspokenness about the uh, sexual abuse scandal in USA Gymnastics, and also because of what's happening right now at the Olympics, and especially today with the announcement that Simone Biles has withdrawn, at least from the team competition. We'll see what happens uh, on the individual stuff, and we'll know about that because the individual competition starts Thursday and we're on on Friday. So Ali is a particularly uh, timely guest. And then, you know, like Bill Maher, uh, we'll have more in-depth interviews than Bill has, but we'll have a panel like he has. So we'll have a panel of people uh, and we'll toss out whatever seems topical or appropriate to talk about given the composition of the panel. And then I'll conclude it with an essay or commentary of some kind. And then it'll be midnight and I'm not sure what will be on HBO, but I'll know by Friday. I'd love to hear your perspective, Bob Costas, on Simone Biles today and about her openness uh, about how she's feeling mentally on this world stage. What are your thoughts Mm -hmm. in that you've covered pretty much every important Olympian that there is. What were your thoughts in watching her and watching her perform this week? Well, she has every right to her own feelings and her own decisions, um, the particulars of which I only understand from a distance. It's very clear that her teammates love and respect her and that she will be there uh, to cheer them on even if she doesn't decide to compete in the individual events. Um, She's a very bright young woman. She understands at some level what comes with the territory. And she's participated in it willingly and benefited from it. She'll benefit financially, already has. Um, There's a goat meme, which she has associated with herself, and she certainly is the goat of her particular sport. Uh, So she accepted being celebrated. She accepted being, with all due respect to Katie Ledecky and others, the face of this particular American Olympic team. She accepted all that, probably knew at some level what came with it. And at one point, that balance was worth it to her. But perhaps no one could have anticipated, uh, including Simone herself, all of the emotional pressure that comes with it. Where she is expected not just to excel, but to be perfect. Uh, And each individual is going to respond to that in a different way. Um, So I I don't, I have no uh, reason to dispute or question her reasons or or her decision. I sympathize with with everything that that goes into it, but there are both benefits and drawbacks to being in small, small and vile's position. I'm sure she understands that. Bob Costas joins us here on The Rich Eisen Show. Back on the record with Bob Costas premiering Friday, July 30th at 11 p.m. on HBO and on HBO Max. Bob, with the myriad interviews you've done, who has been the most impactful to you? Wow. Well, you could say in a certain sense, although it certainly wasn't my favorite, um, I think we handled it competently, the interview with Jerry Sandusky, just as the Penn State story was breaking nationally, probably had the greatest measurable impact in that most of the country concluded that night that he was guilty. He still disputes that. There are appeals pending. He has some defenders now in the press who either think he was railroaded or that uh, what he did was not quite as god-awful as what most people now believe. I don't know how that will play out. We're 10 years down the road. But certainly at the time, that had a tremendous impact on the public understanding of the case. And what interview is out there that you still are searching for? Who's the person that you haven't gotten yet that you want to sit down across from you? 
Well, you know, this is maybe a generational thing. Uh, all of us would love to see an interview, a truly in-depth and candid interview with Sandy Koufax. But I totally respect and even admire Sandy's stance. He's a private person by nature. He's a humble person by nature. And he also has what very few, even the greatest of the great, very few have this. There's just no disputing his place in history and in the public imagination. He didn't have to win 300 games. He was done at 30 because of his arthritic elbow, won less than 200 games, but was so great and so elegant in such a short period of time. What is there for him to defend or explain? He's probably better off, not just because of his reticence and honest shyness, but he's probably better off not even attempting to gild the lily or go back down memory lane. Every recollection of him from every direction is 100% well-earned, justified admiration. So, so what can he do to advance that any further? And every time I cross paths with Sandy, he is extremely gracious. And it, the last time I asked him for an interview was probably, I don't know, 15 years or so ago. And he never used an intermediary. He always called me back. And the conversation went something like this, Susie. If I ever do it, I'll do it with you. And then I began to realize I'm at the front of a line that never moves. So <laughs> having that designation as, as the person first in line is pretty much meaningless. Yeah, that, that's a one-way ticket to know. Yeah. yeah but, although, you know, obviously he's sort of like, you know, in the literary world, everyone wanted the interview with J.D. Salinger right, right, or with right. Harper Lee because they were so reclusive. For a long time, you know, he's kind of out of the public eye now, Think about this, Susie. You always saw Jack Nicholson at Laker games, but Jack Nicholson never did a television interview. He wouldn't even go on with Johnny Carson when everyone was flocking to Johnny in the last month, wouldn't even go on with Johnny Carson. And his explanation in the 90s was, look, I'm a movie star. You go to the movies. They turn the lights down. It's a big screen. That's different than being on your little home screen and people are puttering around. I don't want to diminish that mystique. And you have to give that to him, which leads to this story. Do you have a minute for it? I always have a minute for you, Bob. Why, thank you, Susie. So, 1992 NBA Finals, the Bulls and the Trailblazers. So it's one of the games in Chicago. And Nicholson is in Chicago um, filming Hoffa. So he's a huge basketball fan not surprising he can get good seats not at center court like <laughs> in la but underneath one of the baskets along the baseline and somebody from nbc spots him and the producer says bob do you know jack nicholson i said well, yeah I'm, I'm, we're kind of friendly acquaintances he's down there go ask him if he'll come on with you at halftime now i'm way up in the rafters in the old chicago stadium i'm like guys this is a fool's errand He's not going to do it. You owe it to us. Go ask him. Okay, it's like four minutes to go in the second quarter. I go winding down the ramp, and I wait until a timeout. And I come up behind him, and I tap him on his right shoulder. And his head turns, and I swear it reminded me of that scene in The Shining. I know that look. I know it. I know it. Uh huh. Yeah. So not very. And then his face softens, and I wish I could do a good Nicholson impression. He goes, Oh, hi, Bob. And I say, Jack, just play along. They're watching. I'm supposed to ask you if you'll come on at halftime. And he says verbatim, although I have to edit out one word, verbatim. Bobby, Bobby, you're a nice kid. You do good work. How can I put this? No effing way. <laughs> to which I say, Jack, I take that as a firm no. Enjoy the rest of the game. And now I got to haul ass all the way back upstairs. I barely get, up, get there before the buzzer to end the second quarter. Fool's errand indeed. When I was a kid working at HBO Sports for Real Sports with Bryant Gumbel and Ross and the whole like, I was doing a profile on Kobe Bryant. Mm -hmm. I was there with James Brown. I saw Jack Nicholson. I said, JB, I'm going to get an interview for the Kobe piece. It'll be great. He said, Susie, I will buy you whatever classic convertible you want if you can get that interview. I was like 20-something. I had hubris. I'm like, JB, watch this. You know, ask Ross. I was a good booker back then. I tap him on the shoulder so I know that look. He swivels. I see the shining look. 
Mr. Nicholson, I'm Susie Schuster. I'm a producer with HBO Sports. JB just told me he'll buy me whatever classic car I want if I can get you to do the interview. He says, kid. And I can't do the I can't do it either. Stink. <laughs> you seem like a really nice kid. And you look really <laughs> cute behind the wheel of a car. But if I do it for you, I gotta do it for everybody else. And I said, Oh, come on, please. <laughs> I don't want to hear the word no. So, yeah, I get that look. I've had that look. It's not a good look. But you know what? It leads to a good story decades later. And so I didn't tried. Come away empty, did we? And I tried, Bob. I can't wait to watch your show. I'm very excited to watch it. I will watch it religiously the four times of the year. If you need any correspondence, I'm just saying, you know, I know people who work. You know, you're on at the, the chief. front of the line, Susie. Even oh, God. It's a line that never moves. Just yeah, don't make it the <laughs> same line. That's not good. Say hi <laughs> to Jill for me, please. I will. Thank you so Take much, care, Bob. Susie. Take care. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.